Hey y'all, welcome back to Right at the Wire. Well, we've covered Friday, so now let's get into Saturday's wagering strategy. Let's take a look. So these are the races for uh, Saturday, November 4th. We're going to be considering the Dirt Mile, the Philly and Mare Turf, the Philly and Mare Sprint, the Mile, the Distaff, the Turf, the Classic, the Turf Sprint, and the Sprint. And we'll start with the Dirt Mile, race three, and uh, with the sad... Uh, Death of Practical Move and the Scratch of Algiers. This is a very different race than it looked initially. Obviously, the field is down to seven. And uh, I, to me, it looks more and more like Cody's wish and everybody else. Uh, before, I thought Practical Move would give a really good, uh, a really good challenge and it might change the complexion of the race. But as it is now... Uh, from uh, from the field that's existing, uh, A is Cody's wish, of course, and then it's basically B's, and they're, they're really more C's, to be honest. Uh, I think charge it because he has that uh, mercurial factor of, you know, he could, if the light bulb goes off and he runs the way he can, uh, he could win this race. And same can be said for National Treasure. If they get aggressive with him and try to get him on the front end, where he won the Preakness, he's got a chance. Um, it's uh, uh, They're not as good as Cody's Wish. There's no question about that. But perhaps, uh, circumstantially, they could slow the pace down enough, one of the two, uh, to, in order to take this race. And then C, we're going to throw in Stage Raider, because he is a hard knocker and you're getting a decent enough price. Um and it's a better price than, say, for Skippy Longstocking, and that's really the appeal more than anything else. But uh, it's kind of hard to find uh, and make an argument for anybody else other than Cody's wish at this point. Uh, Strategy-wise, I'm going to try to beat – I'll throw a, a win ticket in on National Treasure number 9. I, I've always liked this horse, um, and you are getting 8-1, to one, so to me – if they try to get him on the front end and he tries to slow it down, um, you never know. He could wire the field, but uh, it's it's a you know I mean it, I could go either way with that wager. It's just sort of to try to make some money out of this race. Uh, charge it, you could very well do the same, but I just don't like five to one. Uh, I have a feeling one of those is going to try to go get up near the lead, and. Um, uh, particularly charge it if he can stay out of it helps to keep him out of trouble and uh, uh, you know the suburban handicap earlier in the year uh, it worked like a charm so I don't know why they wouldn't try it again but you know they, they know better than me apparently um, incidentally we threw in Skippy Longstocking too on the bottom and that's just for the trifecta uh, so betting wise I think this race is more valuable in the sequential betting but uh, for exact as I'd key Cody's wish on top and use one, five, and nine. Uh, and then just for, you know, to try to, if you can get an upset out of this, maybe your key national treasure number nine and box at one, three, and five. <coughs> and that way, if national treasure does get second uh, at eight to one, you, it's a pretty decent payday. Trifecta. Uh, I just use Cody's Wish on top with 159 and then add Skippy Longstocking in for third place. <clears throat> the, again, the sequences are where I think this race is more valuable. You can double single in Cody's Wish at three with six, seven, eleven in the next race. And then the pick three isn't bad. You got Cody's Wish and then you can go six, seven, eleven. And I think the uh, uh, the Philly and Mare Sprint is a two horse race. So you can basically use either society or goodnight olive or both depending on what your preference is so uh you can probably wager a little more on that one and that's a good safe ticket and uh we will have uh, pick fives at, at the end after we've covered all the races <coughs> excuse me and determine which one is uh the best to play next race we're going to talk about is the philly and mayor turf the fourth race and uh, this one looks a little top-heavy, but I do think there's some value to be had here. Uh, for our A's, we're going to use Inspiral and Warm Heart. And uh, the question with Inspiral distance-wise, I, I don't think it's going to be a problem, but it is there, uh, a skosh. But I think that she is uh, definitely the one to beat. Warm Heart is uh, an excellent candidate as well. But after those two, 
uh, the class kind of drops off a little bit. Uh, we're going to use Lindy because I really like that last race. And this one is on the rise and you are getting 12 to 1. Uh, we'll use Win the Moon with the Moonlight mainly because you don't get Charlie Appleby at 20 to 1 too often. And that one always seems to find a way into the money while not winning. And then finally, Lumiere Rock. Uh, is one that uh, I think is getting better progressively, uh, should be up near the front end, and um, should be able to uh, to stick around. Uh, and at 12 to 1, you're getting uh, really good value, I think. So uh, if we look at the betting strategy, uh, we'll try to use Lindy as uh, to, you know, for the upset, and uh, we'll place a win bet there. Uh, a 2-6 exact a box using our two A's I think makes a lot of sense, although I try to stay away from boxing. But in this case, I think they are the two best options um, and should be going at it coming into the stretch. And then we'll, we can, uh, we'll gamble a little bit and, and try to, uh, uh, if somehow Lindy can get home, we're going to use a key box with seven on top with two, three, six, and 11. And then we'll do a trifecta. Uh, we'll, we'll risk it again. We'll go seven on top with two, three, six, and 11, two, three, six, 11. But the, probably the one that's preferable is a back key because I do think Lindy's got a very good chance to get into the money at a good price. So you can use her, uh, use it that way and back key for second or third. And that way you've got more options to win the race. Uh, but again, the emphasis is trying to get some value into this race. It does look a little top heavy. Uh, for the double, I'd use two, six, and seven. And in the next race, the Philly and Mare Sprint, I think it's a two horse race. It's either Good Night Olive or Society. So just use those two. And that's a good safe double, I think. And then the pick three, uh, you got two, six, seven from this race, one, seven from the Philly and Mare Sprint. And then one, two, six, and ten from the mile. That will require a little bit more spreading. Uh, the problem is it is a kind of a top-heavy race as well. Uh, so we're really of all the races in this sequence. I think uh, the best chance we've got is with Lindy uh, to get in to offer some value. So that's the chance we're going to take, and uh, hopefully we can get it home. So now we're going to talk about the Philly and Mare Sprint. This is going to be a short conversation. Uh, I think this is a two-horse race. I know I've listed five horses here, but I think it's either Society wiring this field or Good Night Olive chases her down and wins this race. Um, I, I just think it's, a, it's another race that's top-heavy, that's better. Uh, we, we can use this race uh, better in the sequential betting as opposed to the exotics. Uh, just, I mean, you know, Kirsten Bosch is the obvious uh, choice to upset the apple cart as a, as a closer, but you're not going to get natural value or good value because everybody's going to see that. So to me, you just have to use this race uh, in the sequences. So if we look at our betting strategy, I'd throw a double in there with the Good Night Olive and Society on top and then use one, two, six, and 10 in the mile and hope we can get one of them with a good price home. And then you could also use a pick three uh, with one, seven, and then one, two, six, 10 in the mile. And then four, uh, three, four, seven, and 10. And uh, spread it out a little bit and hopefully get a price um, home in the uh, distaff, which is entirely possible. So uh, if we can get the first two legs home, if they come up a little chalky, uh, you can get some value in the distaff and it turns into a nice wager and a nice payout. But uh, as far as just exotic betting, I don't really see a lot of value in doing it. So uh, it's for me, it's just the sequences and that's it. Now we'll take a look at the mile, and this promises to be a really fun race. Um, I think it is dominated by the A's, by Marge and Songline, but it's always a lot of fun. And uh, this is, you know, just going all out right from the get-go. And uh, it's, a, it's a really good field. I think it's a, a pretty deep one, too. Uh, from the A's, Marge and Songline, I think, are the obvious choices. And I think it's one of those two to win this race. Uh, from the Bs, Cheryl Spite, I really like the way she's coming into this race. And don't forget, she finished second at 66-1 to 1 last year. Uh, so 
Uh, there's some familiarity and with the Breeders' Cup and uh, good results. So at the looking for value, of course, and I think that uh, I think Cheryl Spite provides it at thirty to one. Uh, Master of the season, not confident uh, about him in this race. Uh, there's uh, he's a handful to train, and um, there's uh, there can be issues with him. Uh, he's certainly talented. He can win this race, but uh, I think I, I kind of like Maj is on the uh, on the upswing, and I like Songline too. I think both of them uh, I prefer a little bit. Uh, you're also master of the seas because everybody saw the Coolmore turf model. They're probably going to hammer down uh, to the chalk, and I think he's beatable. And then for the seas, we're going to throw in Casa Creed, uh, the old veteran. Uh, he can compete at the British Cup level at this distance, especially. And uh, he could very well get in the money. And at eight to one, that's really nice value. And then we'll throw in Exalted, the California horse. Um, it, Peter Yurton is, uh, is red hot as a barn. And uh, this one runs well at Santa Anita uh, at 20 to one. Could very well back into the money. And again, we're looking for value. One other or two others I'll mention as possibles. And this will be odds dependent on the day. Uh, Gina Romantica, I think, is improving. I just don't like her to get to win this race. I think it's uh, she's not as good as the top horses in this race. But if we can get a little better than 12 to 1, then I might consider using. Same can be said for Win Carnelian. There isn't a lot of early speed in this race. So it, there is that potential that this one could get on the lead. And if she uh, he gets comfortable, you know, who knows what might happen. But... Uh, uh, I think it's a little remote, but those are two I'd perhaps think about as offering good value that could compete in this race. So if we look at our betting strategy, um, I think this one, I I'm just going to try to use Cheryl Spite in a couple of ways and, and see if I can get some value into this race and go for the upset. So we'll put a win bet down on Cheryl Spite, and then we're going to box the top two. Marge and Songline, I think it would still pay decent enough depending upon how much you put into it. And then we'll go for, uh, you know, take a risk and we'll key box the one with 6, 10, and 14. That way, if Cheryl Spite does get up for second uh, at over the 30 to 1, we hope, uh, you get a nice payout uh, with one of the chalk on top. And then because we want Cheryl Spite to be in the money, not necessarily win, uh, we can back key in a trifecta. So we use 3, 6, 10, 14, 3, 6, 10, 14. We're going to throw Casa Creed in there as well because you are getting 8 to 1. And then uh, we put Cheryl Spite on the back and key to finish second or third. And uh, if that one comes in with those odds, we got a nice payout. I wouldn't anticipate you doing a double, mainly because you've got to spread a little bit in the mile. And you also have to spread in the distab. So uh, that makes a cost prohibitive double ticket for me. But the pick three, I think you can go uh, give a shot. So you'd use one, two, six, and 10 from this race. Uh, then three, four, seven, and 10 in the distab. And I think there's going to be some value in that one. And that's the appeal of using this pick three ticket. And then I think it's either Augusto Rodin or most of that from the turf, so we only have to use two. So that's still a, uh, you know, that's still a manageable pick three ticket. And if we get some value out of the the mile, or more importantly, the distaff, then it'll pay for itself, and we got a good ticket. So now let's take a look at the distaff, and I think this race uh, is pretty wide open, and I think there's certainly some value to be had. Um, it depends on uh, your preference, but uh, I like Idiomatic to outlast all the other front runners. I think she can do that. Um, I'm I think it's very dubious that any of the others can uh, can do it, but I think Idiomatic can. And uh, I don't think the pace will be quite as hot as anticipated. Um, just given the trainers who train some of those other front runners, I don't think they're going to just send and say, go for it. Um, and... Um, you know, Adair Manor, I don't think he's good enough and randomized. I just think, don't think they'll uh, take the chance by going up. They'll try to rate. So, uh, if anybody's going to beat Idiomatic, I think it's wet paint. 
Um, I think you're getting a good price. I think he's a, uh, she is a horse who is progressing and getting better. And I think she'll be closer to the pace than Clarier and will get the jump. And uh, we'll have the opportunity to run down idiomatic if she's good enough. And that's a tall order. We know this. Uh, pretty mischievous is a B. Um, I like the way this filly is progressing. I have tried to beat her all year, but she is. Uh, uh, she has improved in the areas I thought she needed to. So I think she's a very worthy candidate. And she'll also be sitting in a good position. And uh, if she's good enough, we'll have a shot at Idiomatic as well. Clarier, of course, uh, there is enough pace in here that if, in fact, it does get hot, Clarier will come running late and uh, has every opportunity to win it. The only thing I'm worried about, or not worried, but I, it, that I don't like, is that the price is a little short. Uh, but, um, it, you know, we have to take what we get. And then for value, I think Desert Dawn offers a lot of value at 20 to 1. I don't know necessarily if she's good enough, but uh, if she can just get into the trifecta at 20 to 1, we'll all be very happy, or at least I will. So we're going to try to use wet paint uh, as our uh, a key in this race because I, I think that uh, she can win. It is a risk, and uh, we can certainly cover ourselves. Uh, with idiomatic and keying with the others and, and you know we, we can do that but uh, I want to put a wind bet down on wet paint then we'll key box the exacta with wet paint and pretty mischievous and then we'll key box again uh, to cover ourselves a little bit more with the seven on top and then we'll key in uh, desert dawn and clarier so if we get that 710 exacta uh, we're sitting pretty we're looking good then we'll take a chance with a trifecta. We'll key the seven on top with three, four, nine, ten, three, four, nine, ten. Then we will back key three, four, nine, ten, three, four, nine, ten with seven. And we'll make sure that wet paint can finish second or third there. Uh, if, in fact, idiomatic gets on the lead and is gone, then we can still collect. So it's a way to hedge. Uh, I think you can use a double. I'm going to use single wet paint. And maybe if you want, you can throw an idiomatic there. So make it a 4-7 or a 3-4-7 on top. And then uh, the next uh, race would be the turf, where I think it's either Augusta or Den or most it off, in my opinion. So 7 with 5-9. And then you can do the pick 3. If you get some value in the first leg, then you've got Augusta or Dan or most it off, which won't pay a lot. And then throw in some value in the classic. Uh, I think that race looks like... Uh, it's going to have an unanticipated result. Uh, just have a feeling about it with all the defections. So we throw two, five, seven, and eight in there. And that might be a pretty good pick three if we can get it home. So uh, we'll take a chance with, uh, with wet paint, but we can hedge and cover. Uh, so in the event that she doesn't win, as long as she finishes in the money, we, uh, we come out okay. So now let's take a look at race eight, the turf. And this is another one that looks to be pretty top heavy. Uh, it's either Auguste Rodin or Mostadoff, in my opinion. Um, they are both coming to this race in, in good form. Mostadoff a little better. Auguste Rodin, there still is that question mark about him shipping. So we've got to watch very closely. Uh, so far, I haven't heard anything to the contrary, but uh, we've got to keep our eyes open. Uh, and our ears to the ground with regards to Auguste Rodin, because if there's any vulnerability, he just won't run. And uh, it, it, there's not a question of like he'll run a mediocre race. He'll run a terrible race. Uh, if you look at his uh, running lines, you'll see that. So uh, must enough to me looks like the little better bet. Um, up to the mark, I think, he's come to this race in great form. And I think he can run with these guys. I'm not quite sure. He can take it down, but I think he's good enough to stay with him for sure. King of Steel is a big horse running on firm turf with tight turns, and he's had a long campaign. From what I understand, it's his owner who was more keen for him to run in the race. He's an agent. He's a very high-profile guy, and he likes to gamble. Um, his trainer wasn't really keen on it. So that gives me the feeling that maybe King of Steel won't be at his optimum. 
Uh, but he's still class wise, he's good enough to finish in the money. So we're going to make him a C. Warlock got us, of course, at a mile and a half. You can't exclude. Um, I think she's reaching the end of the rainbow, but needless to say, she's a fine horse and could very well get in the money, might even get up for second. I'm going to throw Broom in because a couple of years ago at Del Mar on firm turf, he ran a hell of a good race and he ran at big odds then too. Um, he's been running on soft turf since then. So uh, this is a better, uh, a, you know, he may be getting back to the surface that he likes. So don't know if he's good enough to win, but I think you're going to get a great price and why not throw him in the mix for the value. And then Shari R, I'm not sure uh, he's really up to snuff uh, right now, but he's got a lot of back class and has had some time off to replenish and refresh. Uh, so I think at 15 to 1, you're getting value. And that's what I'm looking for underneath in this race. Uh, there are some, a couple others, most notably uh, Ernesto. Uh, but 8, eight to 1, I don't think is fair, a fair price for him, considering the up, the arc was on lousy ground from what I understand. And uh, he generally runs on soft turf. So this may not be a preferable surface for him. Um, if you had to think of one other that maybe I would consider value-wise, it's perhaps Bolshoi Ballet, but I just don't think he's good enough against the tops in this race. So if we look at our betting strategy, uh, I don't know that there's a win bet I'd really want to make. Um, the odds are a little short, but I think you can make some money in an exact, uh, you know, boxing the top two for sure. Don't like to do it, but I think this is a, a type of race where you can. And then I would key box. I'd take a couple of horses who have some value. Shari R and Broom. And then put the chalk underneath and uh, and double key it uh, and box it. So if one of those can get you up for second behind one of the chalk, then you get a nice payout. Uh, the trifecta, I'd use the top two, 5-9, five, 5-9, nine, five, nine, and then throw in everybody else behind them. Uh, I think that's logical. And then... Uh, hedge a little bit by using 5-9 on top and then 5-9 in third because I think those two are going to be in the money for sure. And then we'll throw 1-7-8, 11, and 13 in the middle and on the back end. Um, and I think that's a pretty good trifecta bet. Then we'll use a double going into the classic. If we get one of those two home, 5 or 9, now we've got a shot because I think we're going to get some value in the classic. So if we play for it, then we've got a shot at a pretty nice double. The pick three I wouldn't do mainly because you're going to have to spread in the turf sprint. And in my opinion, that becomes cost prohibitive. So let's take a look at the classic. And obviously the defection of Archangelo is, uh, and go rocket ride, rest in peace, are uh, two significant losses to this race. And it really opens it up, in my opinion, this is a wide open race now. Uh, from the A's, I think Ushba Tesoro. Let me tell you my logic. Uh, I am looking for grade one horses to win this. And Ushba Tesoro and Zandon, to me, are the two true grade one horses. You can make a case for proxy to a certain degree, but uh, in the, big, the bigger and better fields, those two, Zandon and Ushba Tesoro, are the ones I consider to be the real deal. Um, I think, uh, just to get it over with, uh, you know my thoughts about White Abario. Arabian Knight from the 12 hole is going to have to really gun it to get to the lead. And Saudi Crown has every advantage, but I'll let the two of them go at it on the front end, and I don't think either one of them is going to last. So uh, that's why they're off uh, the ticket. Uh, the C players are just for value more than anything else. Derma Sotagaki, you got to remember, he had a long layoff before the Kentucky Derby, and it didn't seem to affect him. So uh, I'll assume that he's grown a little bit, put on some muscle, and there's got to be a reason he's here and you're getting 20 to 1. I don't know if he can win this race, but uh, he, you know, he had a decent enough trip in the Derby. Uh, so perhaps he's progressed and improved and he's well, yeah, I'm willing to take a shot with him for value uh, just for the price you need that in this race. 
Uh, and then we'll throw in Dreamlike and Bright Future. I kind of grouped them together. Not really thrilled with either one of them, to be honest. Uh, but again, they're offering value. And I think that's what you have to have in this race. And then finally, we'll throw in Proxy. Because again, 12 to 1, you're getting good value. I think Xandon is absolutely the best value on this card. And if the light bulb did go off from the Woodward, uh, we're going to be looking pretty good. So if we look at our betting strategy, um, I'm going to go with Ushpa Tesoro to win. Uh, I think that's a, uh, a good solid 4-1 to one price if we get something near it. Uh, I may switch that to Zandon if we can, can stay around 12-1. to one. I know I'm not sure we will, but uh, I think Ushpa Tesoro is training great. Looks great. That last race sold me. He's not going to be closing from the clouds as suspected. And I think he's going to be right off the leaders and we'll have every chance to win this race. And uh, I think he will. Um, exotics, uh, exotics wise, uh, I'll keep Box him uh, on top with uh, Zandon and Clapton. Clapton is training lights out, according to Mike Welsh. And at 20 to 1, you're getting a great price. He is progressing. Just don't know if he's got enough to win this race. But I'm willing to take a stab uh, with, a, with a nice price. Uh, and then we'll do another exact with eight on top with two, five, and seven uh, to get some extra value. And then we'll throw in another exact as a saver with the C's, 10, 11, and 13. We'll do a trifecta keying the eight with our B's, two, five, seven. And then we'll go two, five, seven, 10, 11, and 13. And we'll just go for a try. And if Ushpa Tesoro comes in, we got a really good shot and really nice payday. Uh, the double... The turf sprint, we're going to have to spread. So, But we can single Ushpa Tesoro, and then we'll go 2, 5, 6, 9, 10. So if it's a $1 ticket, it's only going to cost you 5 bucks, and you get value on the back end of it. And then in the pick three, uh, we'll single Ushpa Tesoro again. We'll spread. Uh, that should be 2, uh, two 5. Or, uh, no, we're going to go 2, 6, 9, 10. We're going to leave out Live in the Dream. I'll tell you why in a second. And then we're going to use Elite Power, Speedboat Beach, and then we'll throw Gunite in as a saver. So that's one pick three. And then we'll do a really tight one uh, with our uh, with our uh, with our chalk, our our, fa our best selections for each race. We'll go eight with five with seven eight, and then we can leverage that a little bit. So if we're right, uh, we can uh, collect a little extra on it. So this is a wide open race. I think there's a lot of value to be had in the classic. But if Ushpa Tesoro can come in for us or Zandon, we're looking good. So the turf sprint is wide, about as wide open as you can get. Look at all those prices. They're all about the same. Uh, this is a race that could go any way. So basically you just plant your flag and hope for the best. That's really all you can do in a race like this. Uh, you can see from the field, we've narrowed it down to Live in the Dream, who I really like in this race. Uh, just that, that top end speed. Um, I really, uh, you know, she just uh, can really pour it on. I don't think she has to go quite as quick as she did in the last race. I think they'll learn that. And uh, she's got a really good chance to win this. Roses for Deborah, I think, is offering awesome value at 12 to 1. Draw a line through that last race, and uh, she's right there. Bradzell, I think, offers a little bit of value. Might be a bit of an underlay. I don't know. It could go either way with him. But uh, he's coming in from England, and uh, his last couple of races have been a little disappointing, but perhaps the surface will pick him up because he did run well on firm surface at Ascot. And then Motorius, uh, we, you know, he, he's definitely one to use. Problem is they're all 5-1. to one. It's a wide-open race. Caravel, the defending champ, uh, she's at 5-1. to one. And Arzak's at 6-1. to one. So, I mean, these are all uh, viable horses. You, you know, Tony Ann, I could see at 15 to 1, uh, is offering some pretty good value. Uh, big Invasion, I just, he, uh, from the one hole, he's going to find trouble. I just guaranteed of it. Uh, so maybe Tony Ann, I could sprinkle in there. I wouldn't talk you out of it if you tried. Uh, but I think this race is an absolute spread. Uh, betting strategy, we're going to go with Roses for Deborah because of the value, and I think she has a very good chance to win this sitting off the leaders. Uh, we'll box her with Live in the Dream as the most viable win candidates, and then we'll key box both of them, five with two, three, six, nine, ten, 10, 
and then nine with two, three, five, six, nine, ten. So if it comes in five, nine, we're gold, all three. And then for the double, we can spread in this race because in the sprint, I think it's a two horse race. It's Speedboat Beach or Elite Power. So we'll go two, three, five, six, nine, ten with seven and eight for the double. So the sprint is uh, the last race on the card, and it's the end of the pick five, which we're going to get to in a second. And uh, it should be pretty self-explanatory. It's a two-horse race, in my opinion. It's Speedboat Beach or Elite Power. Uh, Gunite certainly will factor. And then we throw in a couple others for value, maybe to get underneath if you want to go for the, uh, the trifecta or the super, Chosen Vron or Nak Nakatomi. Uh, it's going to be quick to discuss this race because I don't think there's really worth anything betting for. This race is, uh, should be useful only for the exotics because the prices on the top end are too short and I can't see a viable long shot in this race. So let's look at the pick five, the late pick five, starting with the distaff. And uh, you see all the A, Bs, and Cs for each race are to the left. Uh, in leg, set, leg one, race seven, we're going to use three, four, and seven. In the turf, in leg two, we're going to use five and nine. It's either Augusto Rodin or Mostadov, one of those two. And then race three, the classic, we're going to spread two, five, seven, eight. We're going to throw in Dermasodagaki there. What the hell? Uh, if he does uh, run back at a price, uh, we'll make us all happy. We'll spread in the turf sprint with two, five, six, nine, and ten. And then finally, as we mentioned in the sprint, I think it's a two horse race. It's seven or eight. So that's a $100, $20 ticket on a $1 base. And uh, I think that's the most viable use for the sprint. So that's Saturday's card. More races, more options. There is some value, although uh, there is um, a lot of the races appear a little chalky, but we'll hopefully we can scrape out some value. And you always got to remember, you don't have to hit every race. All you got to do is just... Uh, uh, take a shot in one and hit it, and it makes for the whole weekend. So uh, hopefully our analysis helps you, and I wish you the best of luck, of course, as always. And if you do like content like this, please like and subscribe. And thanks to all of you who have come on board recently. Really appreciate it. Um, we'll just see how we do this weekend, and uh, we'll go on all the way through the thoroughbred racing season, what remains of it. So stay on board for that. I'll talk to you soon, and until then, be well.